Before we start this video, large thank you to Anthony, Philip, Matthew, Paul, G, Nimyodadev, Joe, Ben, and Ben for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to give our AI the ability to parry you and to repost you with a critical attack. So first, let's begin by opening up the character combat manager. Let's make a private void. We're going to call this attempt repost. And we're going to pass a raycast hit variable and call it hit. Now this is going to take the logic from the backstab. Um, so we're just going to copy all of this and paste it down here. We're going to change a couple of things, obviously. But for the most part, it follows a similar sequence. So we're checking for enemy character. We're checking if they're being backstabbed or reposted already. We're checking uh, or making sure to enable that they are invulnerable so they can't be damaged while in this uh, animation. And now we're changing this to character dot is performing repost to true instead of backstab and take the performing backstab animation and replace it with the performing repost animation. Then over here uh, where we have the pseudo code for commenting and temp repost, place the actual functionality and pass the raycast hit variable. Okay, that looks fine. Now right below that, let's just say return because if you're performing a repost, you're not gonna perform a backstab, so no need to run the code after that. All right, let's minimize that, and now let's minimize this as well. Uh, down here where it says get backstabbed, this is the character being backstabbed, change that to get reposted. We don't have the logic for that, but we're gonna make it right this moment. Okay, so that looks good. Now we can copy the logic for get backstabbed and kind of invert it a little bit. Uh, it's gonna behave the exact same way, except it's going to, again, um, a couple of small changes. One, we're not going to rotate in the same direction the player is facing. Uh, we're going to rotate towards them as so we're facing them. So let's change that to get reposted. Uh, let's change this to character dot is being reposted to true. And let's play the animation for reposted, not backstabbed. And likewise, we're going to start the coroutine for force move character to enemy backstab position. Uh, let's change that to enemy repost position. Now, if you're using similar animations that occupy around the same distance, you could keep that position the same. But for the sake of tutorial, I will show you and just make another position. Uh, we have to make another code team regardless because, again, we're changing the rotation. Not so we're facing the same direction as our enemy, but towards uh, so we are facing towards them. So let's actually change this now to force move character to enemy repose position. And it's very easy. Just put a minus sign in front of this rotation, uh, and that will make them look the opposite direction of the enemy is facing. So that means towards them. Uh, before we do that, let's actually make a public transform for the repost receiver transform and it will be handled the exact same way as the backstab receiver transform was. Okay, so come down here again. Uh, well, actually, let me just check this real quick. I'm gonna copy this and just paste this down here. Save me some typing. Uh, that looks fine. That will be enemy or a character performing repost, so let's rename that. The name isn't too important there, but just so it stays clean. Uh, and down here where it says backstab receiver transform, change that to repost receiver transform. All right, save that. And that looks good, just checking my notes here. Oh, right, yeah, put this, uh, just say minus. So minus transform dot forward will be basically, instead of looking in the same direction as them, it's looking in the opposite direction as them, which is facing them. So let's just make a new game object for repost receiver transform. Go up to your player, go to the character combat manager and drag in that transform variable. All right, now that should be working as intended. I'm just gonna check can be reposted on my enemy here, so I don't need to parry him, it's just so I can go up and repost and make sure it's all working fine. If I hold the repost button, yes, it is all working as intended. Not passing the critical damage step, but that's okay. We can get to that shortly. It's not difficult to do, but the animations are all working and it syncs up fine. All right, so let's go to the enemy and get it working for the AI as well. So let's go to the combat stance state script. Let's add a, uh, or rather go down and check this first and see where we're at. Because I think we added the, the chance for rolling for it. Yes, we did. Um, okay, this is, we don't want to be able to repost on an archer. We can't repost the bow. So let's go to the sword and shield. Um, right here, if will perform parry, then we perform the parry. Uh, so let's just say if enemy, we're going to add something else to this. If enemy dot, or we'll start by saying if will perform parry, and then if our enemy, enemy being the current AI, dot current target is attacking, we need to know that first, then we're going to parry the target. And we can further make this a little more um, intelligent by checking to see if the enemy's attack can be parried. So I'll show you how we have a, a bullet set up for that already. So just gonna type in parry current target and then we can come down below this logic here and make a void for uh, parry current target. So right at the bottom or anywhere here for that matter, just gonna make a private void. We are gonna have to have this function require an enemy manager variable so open up some brackets there. 
and then insert that. So we have to think of a couple things now. When do we want our AI to parry? Well, we only want the AI to parry if, first of all, it is allowed. I think we already checked for that, but also we want to make sure if our current target can be parried, because some attacks, as you know, can't be parried. Uh, I think j jumping attacks, for instance, in Dark Souls 3 can't be parried. I believe the whip can't be parried. And then we're going to check to make sure we're within range of the enemy. Now you can adjust this range on the fly. I'm just going to put two here, but I do encourage you to make a number that is uh, that you can just kind of change using a serialization. And we're going to then say we have performed a parry, and we're going to say enemy dot is parrying is true, and then we're going to play the parrying animation. Okay, there we go. Parry 01, that's what mine's called. And I'm going to say true because we are performing action that locks us in. So we don't have a variable for has performed parried, but we're going to make that right now because we want to make sure we're not trying to do this multiple times uh, per arrival on this state. Has performed parry is equal to false. And likewise, every time you make a new state flag, make sure you add it to reset state flags and change it back to false. So when you enter the state again, you can perform this logic again. Otherwise, you will get some weird behavior and the AI will just not do what you want it to do sometimes. All right, save that. And that looks good. Now, oh, we need to pass the uh, enemy manager script here. That's why it's giving us some grief. And we're going to say also, if we have not performed a parry, we don't want to do it again. So I'm just going to pass the enemy here. Why is that still giving me grief? Uh, oh, I've spelled it wrong. <laughs> okay, there we go. Cool. Save. Excellent. Now, let's get to the logic where we begin to repost the target if they are parried. So this is a little bit more complex, but honestly still pretty straightforward. Nothing too difficult here for the way we have it set up. Let's make a private void called check for repost. Again, passing the enemy manager variable. We need to know a couple things. Uh, first off, we need to know if we're within range. And we need to know if they actually can be reposted. And we need to know if we're allowed to perform a parry. You could make a variable here for allowed to perform repost. That would mean the enemy can parry but not repost in some circumstances. If you want to do that, go for it. Make sure you switch enemy is blocking to false in case you have blocking on at the same time. You don't want them to go straight from a block to a repost. That would look kind of strange. And then say enemy dot character combat manager attempt backstab or repost. Now, let's go right up. You want to put this logic further up the chain so it takes priority. So every time we're entering the state again, uh, and after we have parry target, hit return, return this. So we go right up back to the top of the state. And uh, near the very top, make logic that checks to see if our current target can be reposted. And if they can, you want to attempt to repost them. So mine, I'm putting mine just after I've set the destination. You can put it even before that if you wanted to, but make sure you're not putting it before the ground checker is interacting. If enemy.allow AI to perform parry, if enemy.current target can be reposted, then we want to uh, essentially attempt the repost. So we'll say check for repost and pass the enemy state or the enemy manager script and then return this. So let's save. That will make him constantly check for a post until he gets it. So let's change this to sword and shield, the combat style. Uh, tick a lot of perform parry and change that to 100% just for testing purposes. I've also removed every attack from the attack state, so I can't test it. Now, you can erase this old will perform parry uh, code here. I kind of forgot we had this and I wrote it over, out again, but I kind of added a bit more to it. So just erase this and then save. And then this can be parried flag here on the character manager needs to turn on at some point. So several ways to do this. You can make a check and open it up on uh, the same event that opens up damage colliders, or you can use animation events. I'm going to use animation events. Uh, in Nef, I handle it a little bit differently. I make a check for the weapon type, and if the weapon type and the attack type uh, synchronize and are parryable, I open it with my damage colliders. But honestly, I do like having the animation events more because you really get to pick uh, what frames exactly you want the attack to be parryable. I think I'm going to go this route eventually with Neff as well. The other method is a lot quicker and easier because you don't have to hand play some of the events, but I find it is not as nice, at least in my opinion. So let's go back to the game. Let's grab our attack animation and let's go and place some animation events. Oh, and come back into the on state uh, enter here. This is on the reset animated bool and make sure your resetting character dot can be parried is equal to false. That way, in case you get interrupted during the animation and you don't get to play the second animation event, regardless, when you come back to the empty state, you will not be able to be parried. Uh, otherwise, it could stuck. It could get stuck being on and you could get parried in some weird states. So you don't want that. So likewise, go to your uh, attack animations and find a place. I like to put mine before the damage clutter opens uh, or just before and add two animation events. One for enable can be parried and one for disable can be parried. Put those wherever you want. 
obviously you guys have placed dozens of animation events by now if you're this far in the series uh, and i'm sure if you just click this video you probably know what they are anyway so i'll let you go ahead and do that i'm not going to be too picky for this because i want to get across the uh the actual fundamentals of what's going on here and there's plenty of time to polish anyway so put that there that looks good uh, there's actually a frame chart available uh for dark souls 3 that shows you when and how long each attack can be parried for different weapon types so if you guys are interested in that kind of data i think you can find it pretty easy with a google now, if I attack this gentleman, he parries me, but he doesn't repost me. So what's going on here? Well, obviously, if that worked, that would be kind of fluky because we're not really checking for any uh, position of us in respect to our enemy, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to say if enemy uh, as an enemy manager, this is in check for a post, by the way. Uh, if we are interacting, we want to essentially zero out our movement. Uh, so we're when we go to repost our target, we're, the enemy AI is not running off like it just was that time. So... Uh, after we successfully perform a parry, it's going to reset us to the top of the attack or the combat stance state, which is what will then run this code because our target can be parried. And then what we want to do is uh, basically say enemy dot animator set float horizontal to zero over the time of 0 0.2 seconds. So we're talking about delta time. Do the same to vertical. This will stop all movement on both axes. And then we want to, uh, just for good measure, also zero out our velocity in the rigid body. Not really necessary, but I like doing it just in case. Um, and just put a return here before we do that so that if we are in an animation, we finish playing the animation first. And then we'll say if our distance from target is greater or equal to one, because you need to be pretty close to perform our posts, what we want to do is we want to rotate towards the targets. We're facing them, and we want to walk towards them or run towards them. Uh, now, if you j this code will likely only run, or yes, it will only run if you've just parried the player. So, meaning we're always going to be facing them if we have just parried them. So, basically, this will rotate towards them, square off, and we'll it'll push the enemy towards them. Um, else, and then down here, you don't need this this logic anymore. If you get this far, we've are, it's if you got this far in the logic, we are allowed to parry. So you don't need to put that check there. Uh, make sure you put down enemy is blocking is equal to false. And then we're going to say if the enemy dot uh, is not interacting and the player is not being reposted or not being backstabbed, then we attempt to repost or backstab. And what this check above it does is, is if the distance from target is greater or equal to one, then it makes the, the AI walk closer to the to the player before attempting to repost them. And change that number to whatever you want. I find one works pretty great for the settings I have right now. It will depend on your raycast distance on how far you allow backstabs or repost to be performed. I think we're using 0.7 something for our raycast check. So this number is very, very close to that line and it will allow it to work fine. At least it did in my testing before I made this video. So we will see. Uh, when I go in here now, you want to zero out the rigid body velocity. So enemy dot enemy rigid body dot velocity equals vector three out zero. And then we're going to say enemy dot animator dot set float. Again, set the uh, vertical this time because that's all that should be changed from last time if, if the enemy had to get closer. Set it to zero. You don't need to set it to zero over a time of 0 0.2 seconds. Um, since we're blending into the animation of reposting, that won't matter anyway. So just set it flat out to zero, and then you attempt to backstab or repost. Now, it, the good news is if the enemy somehow gets turned around or the player, then the AI should, in theory, perform a backstab, even if the player somehow manages to spin around. Um, but we should always be facing the player in this circumstance unless something really weird happens. Make sure you drag in the backstab and parry transform on the enemy, just like you did for the player. And now let's go test it. So if I run up to the enemy here now and I attack, they should parry me. Yes, they do. And then they should repost me. Excellent. Okay, that works exactly as intended. We're not taking any damage right now because we're not applying the pending damage uh, animation event. Also, I think we're not resetting the can be reposted thing. Let me just check here. Yes, we're not. See how he just reposted me again. So this is quite easy. You can see can be reposted was never reset. Go to the empty state on the animator and on our reset animator bool, every time we're done an animation, we come back here, just type character dot can be reposted is equal to false. And then you will not have that problem. Okay, so now if we go out and test again, uh, it will work as intended and nothing should be broken. Um, all right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you this far, please sure to drop a like, leave a comment. It does genuinely help out the series so much. And thank you so much to my Patreon homies. You are the reason I can keep making these. We're going to eventually add some polish to this because right now it is in a working state. That's what I wanted to get in at first. But we're going to go over and give a lot of the AI functions some love. So I think we're going to continue with AI work in the next video. Uh, make it look a little bit nicer and kind of add some more functionality to it. So I will see you guys then.